My version of the story will be better. There's just something about a 90s domestic psychological thriller that just can't be replicated today. You know, there's always a bit of an erotic undertone. Well-off, happy people getting f***ed by life. And a strong but balanced melodramatic approach. Which brings me to today's selection. Now, of course, this is not straight horror, but what is a thriller really if not an appetizer to the main course that is horror? These can easily coexist within the same conversation. So let's talk about one of my favorites, and that is 1992's The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Nice hearing from you, Carlos. And before I start, I'd listen, I, I always hate doing this as I find it unnecessary, but this is the world we live in. It will be spoiling a 32-year-old movie. Don't be surprised when you click on something this old that you haven't seen and have it spoiled. Do not come and expect to be treated like it's opening weekend. Believe me when I say, nobody likes you. A Hand That Rocks the Cradle doesn't waste any time diving to the deep end. Claire Bartel, played by Annabella Sciorra, is meeting her new obstetrician, which happens to be Q himself, Mr. John Delancey. But things take a turn for the worse when he takes advantage of her trust and assaults her in office. Of course, she tells her husband, calls the cops, and promptly gets this asshole outed. You see, Victor Motz, uh, not loving the prospect of jail for multiple rapes, unplugs himself from life, leaving his very pregnant wife distraught enough to sadly miscarry. There was a sort of tameness that the 90s get saddled with, but especially with these types of thrillers, it's the tone of restraint in which they shine. Now, with pure vengeance, Miss Motz, played by the great Rebecca de Mornay, positions herself to become the Bartel's new living nanny where she'll slowly take over and replace Claire, like that of a parasite. She feeds off the family, the situation, draining Claire of her existence. It's dark, depressing, and pretty. This is a good-looking flick. That's dire tone works well in this sort of idealistic American town. But first and foremost, we need to talk about the cast and why, for a low-key story, it's 90% on how it gets delivered. Of course, this is Rebecca de Mornay's show, and she absolutely nails it as Peyton. Delivering a performance that effortlessly switches between sweet caregiver and cold-hearted schemer. And for the first two acts, de Mornay plays Peyton with a calm yet intense steely take. She's one of those actresses that can convey a multitude of emotions with very limited effort. Look at these scenes and tell me I'm wrong. You know exactly what she's thinking. But when it comes to the tango of dialogue, of course, she steals the whole damn thing. I mean, let's pause for a second and talk about one of the greatest scenes. When she confronted Ernie Hudson Solomon. Oh, man. Don't fuck with me, Richard. My version of the story will be better. I should say, I've always, um, even since I was very little, remember that her feeding the baby was just super dark and uncomfortable. Like, what a manipulative way to gaslight the mom. And Solomon catching Peyton in the act. Talk about a master class in delivery. That pause. For her real self, Mrs. Motts, to snap out. To go back uh, inside, if you will. And to watch Peyton resume control. <laughs> I mean, it's brilliant. My version of the story will be better. There's something really engaging about this type of slow, creeping sense of dread set to this type of serene lifestyle as she moves her pieces around the board for a complete takeover. And I know this won't be received well these days, but, um, I mean, goddamn, can we just give Ernie Hudson the recognition he deserves for this? Dude is out there handing in career-defining performances more than most. And here he's fantastic. The hand that rocks the cradle sort of revolves around Solomon and his connection to the Bartels. And respectfully, and with soul, plays a disabled man that's a hero in the beginning and is sure as shit the end. Add on to that, he's uh, obviously a sorcerer that, damn dude, I hope I'm this fit in my 70s. Annabella Shiora brings Claire to life with a vulnerability that's as heart-wrenching as it is empowering. She portrays the new mom role with both a kind naivety and maternal suspicion. 
though, you know, that's the point of these types of thrillers. The eventual buildup for the weaker character to find their footing and eventually stand tall. And of course to push your crazy bitch nanny out the attic window. Written by Amanda Silver, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is a revenge flick from the side of the antagonist. The Bartels may be the main characters, but I mean, this really is a woman in her mind putting the wrong things right. Peyton's playing the long game. Her manipulation of the Bartel family's trust is the heart of the story. The call is coming from inside the house, and it's a reminder that danger can lurk anywhere. Yet, when she puts this bully in his place, I mean, am I supposed to not root for her here? No. I nodded in approval. Leave Emma alone. Look okay. at me. If you don't, I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. We gonna rock it till the wheels fall off. Smoke weed every day. Don't forget it. And a side note, this makes a great companion piece to the stepfather here. Hats off to the great Terry O'Quinn. Peyton wants a family like Jerry Blake. But revenge is a leading driver here. She wants the kids. Eh, maybe she'll take the great Lloyd Braun. But, I don't know, I can't tell horniness from a calculated lateral move. And speaking of, dude, Matt McCoy has a natural kindness that lends itself to Michael Bartell. And he's one of those actors that every time he shows up, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that dude. I'm sure Michael's blasé attitude may not work for everyone, but I appreciate how reasonable Michael, as a character, was written. He was never aloof for the sake of the movie stringing along the tension, or immediately suspicious of Peyton because, you know, of love. Now, I will admit, he did break his legs a bit too easy for my liking, but I am willing to forgive Frank Costanza's top employee. Another sale, Mr. Costanza. Chalk me up on the big board. We get Graham Revell's great and consistent score, and maybe this is a bit, uh, I don't know, pining for the past, but I think this really shows how dynamic music used to be for something as simple as a domestic thriller. I don't know, everything almost sounds the same nowadays, unless it comes from an auteur blockbuster. They always say it's about location and the setting is picture-perfect suburbia. I love the look of Washington here. It has that sort of old-school look. Big, beautiful houses, scenic landscape. It just feels like everyday America and plays a big part in the overall vibe. Now, I may be reaching a bit here, but I feel this type of typical safe America with a dark underbelly is owed to Mr. David Lynch. And that The Hand That Rocks the Cradle shares some thematic elements with Lynch's work. You know, the sinister aspects of seemingly idyllic settings, the darkness lurking beneath the surface of seemingly normal suburban life. But I don't know. In the end, all roads lead back to Ernie Hudson Solomon. After being framed for assaulting and creeping on a kid, which, I don't know, for some reason putting the underwear in the toolbox was, it was a hard watch. You feel so bad. I mean, they falsely accuse this guy. In fact, my wife watched this for the first time and she was, she was so upset. Hey, hey, babe, what do you think of uh, Rebecca De Mornay screwing over Ernie Hudson? <laughs> See, you think he's out. Peyton won, only for him to help save the day, and the fence he put up ends up being the instrument in Peyton's demise. His fence came back with a vengeance. And that's how you end your movie. A gnarly fence impalement alongside Ernie Hudson gently holding a baby. Well done. No! Dad, get it, man! Let it go! Don't forget it. Did you like looking at me? When your husband makes love to you, it's my face he sees. It's my family. Seems like the world is moving on. Didn't stop, look around. Didn't get a shit, if you're crashing down. You can close your eyes, but not your skin. Don't believe what you refuse to see.